I'm basically staying in the middle of an abandoned amusement park. <laughs> Hello, Wonder Hussy here. Just coming in from a long day of off-roading and exploring in the beautiful desert mountains. But unfortunately, even though it's only 4.20 p.m., well, because it's winter, it's already getting dark. And so that means it's time to start looking for a place to camp. Only trouble is, I don't feel like camping. Okay, maybe I'm just getting soft in my old age, but man, it's winter. It's, uh, my car says it's 54 degrees right now. It's probably gonna be like 38 degrees tonight. Well, I don't really mind sleeping in 38 degree weather. I've got lots of blankets back there. I can make myself a real cozy bed. It's the getting up that sucks. You know, waking up in the morning when it's 39 degrees and you're trying to fumble around and boil water so you can make coffee and your hands are frozen. Lucky for me, there happens to be a very reasonably priced hotel, not far at all, from where I'm exploring. And so rather than freeze my took us off camping tonight, I'm gonna creak open my wallet and get a room. Especially because <laughs> this happens to be a place I've been very curious about for a long time. That's right, I'm gonna stay at Buffalo Bills. Oh my God, if you've ever driven to Las Vegas from Los Angeles on Interstate 15, you've almost certainly seen the sign. You may have even seen the roller coaster that's right, this hotel is located right off Interstate 15 and it features, well, a roller coaster. Uh, it doesn't look like the roller coaster is operational. In fact, I didn't even think this hotel itself was operational. I came out here in 2022, about a year and a half ago, to shoot a video about the inexplicably fascinating roadside blip known as Prim, Nevada. Okay, Prim is where you cross over from California into Nevada and it's where you see those first casinos. Well, it's not really much more than a few gas stations and a couple hotels, but I found it super interesting in that video. And in that video, I came over to poke around Buffalo Bills and it was totally closed. Okay, I guess it closed at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic as so many things did. And well, I thought it would never reopen again. But what piqued my curiosity is I was talking to a Caltrans employee the other day, a guy who's working on road repairs on Highway 127, and he said the road crews, the state was paying for them all to stay at Buffalo Bills. And so I thought, well, gee, I'm exploring in this area the next couple days anyway. It's cold, I don't feel like camping, and I'm real curious to see what kind of condition this hotel is in. Why not? creek open my wallet. Now, unfortunately, I kind of dithered too long. If I would have uh, booked the room last night or this morning, I think I could have got it for like $20 cheaper. But as it is, even with taxes and resort fees and everything, it was only 71 bucks. Now, if the reviews I read online are accurate, well, it's gonna be pretty gnarly, especially because I'm getting one of the cheap rooms. Uh, apparently they started some kind of remodel in here and they haven't done all the rooms yet. So I'm expecting some wear and tear. I'm expecting some, well, frankly, some filth. But I guess most of all, I'm expecting a heater and a hot shower. So I'm not gonna complain too much if there's a few breadcrumbs on the floor. Just so long as there aren't any bed bugs. Anyway, it's totally fascinating to me that they have this whole abandoned roller coaster out in front of the hotel just sort of rotting away but i'm guessing the kinds of folks that stay here nowadays don't really have time to be riding roller coasters it looks to me there's a lot of pickup trucks in the parking lot it looks to me like it is a lot of caltrans workers road workers construction workers anybody who's working on projects in this area and doesn't want to have to drive all the way back and forth to las vegas which is like 
mm, 40 miles from here. So, you know, why drive 40 miles when you could stay right here near the job site? Man, look at this. I think there were two rides here. There was a roller coaster, which you can see the track in the foreground. But then in the behind that, you can see, I think there was a water ride too. Like those little boat things, logs, that you uh, float down that track in. I'm guessing it's all totally dried up now and there's an unspeakable amount of filth and litter all over this place. I mean, you think they would take some pride in it and like at least hire somebody to clean up the grounds a little bit. Like all the grass is dead. There's weeds everywhere. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> oh well. I'm not exactly expecting the Ritz. I'm not gonna have a light in my room. <laughs> well, maybe one of the other lights in here will work. Gosh, I certainly hope so, because it's kind of spooky in the dark. Okay, there's a lamp next to the bed. I can just barely make it out. I'm gonna turn the lamp on, and if it works, well, we're gonna see for ourselves if this room is really as bad as the reviews said. Okay, are you ready? Dun, dun, dun! Oh, wow. This ain't bad at all. Let me just go around and turn on every single lamp in the place. That's what I like to do when I stay in a hotel. I just feel like, I don't know, it makes it seem less depressing. Huh? Uh, I'm going to show you what you could stay in for the low, low price of $71 midweek just after Thanksgiving. And I say all of that just to let you know that this is a low dollar time of year in the first place. Okay, I'm gonna turn around from the door we just came into. This is what 71 bucks gets you these days. Here's the bathroom. It's clean. It's modern. It's got a cowboy on the wall. Uh, the shower. <laughs> the shower looks like something out of a 1970s tract house, but you know, do I care as long as it's hot? And well, there's shampoo and conditioner. I guess I don't mind. A few little crusties. A few little crusties never hurt anyone. As long as there's no bed bugs. <laughs> and to that end, let's check out the bedroom. I feel like this is pretty nice for the price. And I mean, I'm guessing this must be one of the remodeled rooms because it looks relatively updated. I mean, I don't see any signs of wear and tear on the furniture. I'm gonna make sure to turn this dang clock off. Because <laughs> last time when I was staying at the Rio, I forgot to check the clock and the alarm went off at 6.30 in the morning and woke me up. <laughs> well, I'm planning to get up at six tomorrow anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, the bed looks pretty nice. There's an old fashioned telephone. There's a chair and a little table, you know, for having your cocktail while you sit at the window looking out at the, uh, well, Gosh, it's gonna be hard to see because of the glare. Looks like we're kind of just looking out at the parking lot. You can see a little bit of the old abandoned. I don't know what that is. I thought that was part of the roller coaster, but I, I don't know. I guess that was part of the roller coaster. Wow, what a surreal place. I'm basically staying in the middle of an abandoned amusement park. Oh my God, what if there was a Chernobyl themed casino in Vegas, wouldn't that be amazing? Anyway, here's the rest of the room. Nice desk, chair, well, that's good because I got some work to do. Nice flat screen TV. All in all, it's a basic room that you would expect to get at just about any hotel. Look, there's even some like cowboy art hanging on the walls. That's a nice touch. But none of that means anything if there's bed bugs. Now they say to check for bed bugs. I think you're supposed to check behind the headboard, but this headboard is like bolted to the wall. I mean, I can't really see very good back there, but there's no little black dots, which I think you're supposed to look for. Uh, they're like bed bug eggs. 
Mm, there's some markings on the sheets. I don't know how well that speaks to their housekeeping department. Anything's better than camping in 38 degree weather. I don't know. It looks pretty clean to me. I mean, yes, technically, if I really want to snoop, there are a few little crumbs on the floor, but nothing like what I was reading about online. I mean, in the Google reviews I read, people were saying that their dog ran around the room eating crumbs for like an hour and this was broken and that was broken and this was gross and that was gross. Uh, again, I must have gotten one of the upgraded rooms because I feel like this really isn't that bad at all. Okay, well, I'm going to get settled in. I'm going to unpack my overnight bag and then I need to go see about getting something to eat. I'm starving. I've been driving around the desert all dang day, hiking and poking my nose into all kinds of things. I've really worked up an appetite. Yeesh. And I did just notice some stains on the desk. Uh, I mean, nothing that a quick wipe of the rag wouldn't fix, but I mean, come on guys, how much you pay in these housekeepers? Ugh, pillows are none too clean either. Good thing I always travel with my own. Gosh, I always wondered who stayed in this place. Yeah, you know, you're driving to Vegas, you're only another half hour, but you decide to stop for the night and stay in Prim? It always seemed weird to me. Now I know there's well, the Mint 400 off-road race isn't far from here, so maybe a lot of off-roaders like to stay here because there is, there's a lot of desert trails and the, the track for the Mint 400. Just back in the hills there where I was exploring today, so I suppose if you were an off-roader, this would get, be a good place to stay. Then there's a big arena attached to this hotel where they have concerts, so I guess if you're seeing a show here, and it's always the kinds of bands that, like, like Anne Margaret, you know, like Anne Margaret's awesome. Well, she was awesome, but you know, who wants to see Anne Margaret nowadays? Anyway, those are the kinds of acts that play here. And so I guess if you're going to see one of those acts, well, you might get a room and try to ride that roller coaster. Or, you know, if you work for Caltrans and you're working on a road project and you don't want to have to drive back and forth to Victorville every night, well, I suppose you might stay here then too. But regular tourists like me, <laughs> well, there must be something wrong with me. Actually, I didn't know there's something wrong with me. And one of those things is I'm hungry, so let's go try to find some food. Unfortunately, if you're trying to find something to eat at Buffalo Bill's, you're SOL. Every single restaurant seemed to be closed. In fact, the whole casino had a weird abandoned vibe. I walked around the entire property and only saw a handful of people the whole time, and most of them were working there. I don't know how this place stays in business. I mean, it's a huge cavernous building, and the entire thing was brightly lit with all the colored lights and slot machines blinking, and the whole place was climate controlled too. I can't imagine how much it costs to keep a building this size heated to 65 degrees or whatever it was. And with no one there pumping quarters into the slot machines, how the heck does Buffalo pay his bills? It really did feel like being in an abandoned amusement park. An abandoned amusement park the day after the apocalypse when all the humans have died but the machines keep going until the power runs out. You could still see the traces of Buffalo Bill's former glory days as a western mining-themed family resort, the fake trees, the weird old-timey mannequins, the deserted arcade, and the drained canal that the water ride used to float along. The only thing missing were the people. Even the arena seemed like a relic of a bygone era. Faded stars like Smokey Robinson, Paul Anka, Reba McIntyre, and Gladys Knight played here a decade ago. But who's playing here nowadays? For that matter, who's drinking here? Who's gambling here? Who's staying here? Is there anything at all to draw people out to this weird empty casino in the middle of nowhere? Oh, look, it's Bonnie and Clyde's death car. Oh my gosh, I've been trying to see this for a hot minute. Wow, the car Bonnie and Clyde were shot to death in. I guess those are the bullet holes in the windows. Oh my god, that is a crack up. And there's even Bonnie and Clyde slot machines. Oh no, what's this? This is the shirt Clyde was wearing when he was killed. Is that what that is? Yikes. Certificate of Authenticity. 
This certifies that this garment is the authentic shirt worn by Clyde Barrow at the time of his death on May 23rd, 1934. The Bonnie and Clyde exhibit was pretty much the only thing of interest in the entire casino, unless you just enjoy walking around creepy deserted casinos, in which case you should book a trip to Buffalo Bill's ASAP, and if possible, do it before Christmas, so you too can experience the thrill of hearing the ghostly sound of Johnny Mathis crooning holiday classics from tinny loudspeakers way up in the rafters about a mile above the casino floor. If you're into vaporwave, there's no finer experience. But if you're looking for a fun place to grab dinner and a few drinks, better look elsewhere. <laughs> Since the only thing I could find to eat was a vending machine selling microwaved junk food, I had no choice but to leave the property and go across the street where there's a Starbucks, a pink box donuts, a few fast food joints, and according to Google, a Mexican grill that sold my favorite, asada fries. Oh yeah, look at that, asada fries. Go ahead and order whenever ready. Okay, I'll just get the asada fries, please. No worries, anything else for you? Um, that's it, thank you. Okay, wow, the guy at the window of that Mexican place was super cool, and he actually said they were slammed this past weekend, so I feel like I am being a little bit disingenuous by filming this video right after Thanksgiving. Of course the place is gonna be dead, you know? But what, today's Tuesday? Two days ago on Sunday when everybody was driving back to LA, every business here was probably jam-packed, including the hotels, which I'm still not sure why you would stay here <laughs> instead of just going home. As for me, I took my food back up to my room, cranked up the heat, and stuffed my face on what turned out to be reasonably decent asada fries. They weren't the best I've ever had, but they hit the spot, so I cleaned my plate and then headed into the bathroom to clean myself. Much better. I'm pleased to report that the water was hot, the pressure was good, and even though it looked like a 1970s tract house shower, it was all right. The only downside is there was no bath mat, so I had to use a hand towel. And come to think of it, there's no Kleenex either. I guess that's what you get for $71 40 miles outside of Vegas. Realistically, despite the lack of Kleenex and a bath mat, and despite the dingy bed linens and lackadaisical housekeeping, compared to other places I've stayed for the same price, I felt that Buffalo Bills was okay. If I'd been there on a weekend, especially if they were having a concert in the arena and the restaurants were open and there was people drinking and partying in the casino, it would have felt a lot less creepy. But then, the room would have probably cost twice as much. And besides, I like creepy. Well, I survived my night at Buffalo Bills. And to be honest, I would totally stay here again. The bed was comfortable. The room was quiet, the water in the shower was nice and hot, and I didn't realize it at the time, but I have a pretty interesting view <laughs> out my window. Looking through the roller coaster, you can see the beautiful mountains in the background, which is where I'm headed shortly to go explore another fabulous abandoned desert location. Uh, before I check out of the room, there is one thing <laughs> I wanted to note. I was down here on the floor last night doing some sit-ups and push-ups, trying to stay fit. And I happened to notice somebody left a t-shirt in the corner. And it looks like the housekeeping didn't notice it. Eh, Tommy Bahama. I mean, it's not like it belonged to a homeless person or anything. Uh, that being said, I don't want to take it with me. I guess I'll put it in the trash. I don't want to just leave it here. Because then the housekeeper will think, it was mine and I'm the slob. So I'll go ahead and put it in the trash <laughs> and let them deal with it. Anyway, other than that, no complaints about the room and that was just a minor complaint that was more funny than anything. One thing about staying in these casinos though is they never put a coffee maker in the room because they want you to go down to the casino to get your morning joe and that way you might drop a few dollars in the slot machine while you're at it. Well, I brought my own instant coffee but there's no way of heating water in here. There's no microwave or anything so Man, I actually had two cups of coffee with just 
really hot tap water and that simply will not do so i need to go out into prim and make one last stop before i leave to get some coffee Nothing like a fresh cup of decaf at the side of the highway <laughs> by a fake rose bush. <laughs> Stay classy, Prim. <laughs> what do I care if the rose bushes are fake or there's coffee makers in the room or somebody left a t-shirt under the chair? I'm out of here. I'm gonna go explore the beautiful mountains, but I know I will at some point be back to Prim again. And I would stay at Buffalo Bills again.